Monte Carlo pricing. Alrighty, this is one of my favorite topics, so let's dive right in. When determining how to price a financial derivative, we have a, a couple of options. We can go for more of a closed form solution using a variation of the Black-Scholes equation, or we can use something called Monte Carlo pricing. And what Monte Carlo pricing aims to do is generate a certain number of sample paths into the future and then determine the payoff of the financial derivative in question and then take all of those payoffs, average them, and then discount them to the present to find the current value of that derivative. So for this example, I just copied this call option for the spider on Yahoo Finance. And as you can see, the current price of the option is $154.46. Now, using Monte Carlo pricing, we're gonna be able to arrive at a price that's very similar to this. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so we're gonna start with the geometric Brownian motion class that we've worked with before. And, and if you haven't seen this, then I encourage you to go watch my video on geometric Brownian motion where I explain how we use and implement this. So before we, before we move on to actually creating a Monte Carlo simulation and, and talking more about what that means, we need a way to model the payoff of the financial derivative we're pricing. So in this case, we are pricing a standard call option, a vanilla call option, but this can be extended to more complicated derivatives than any form of exotic or anything with a, a non-traditional, non-standard payoff. But as I said, for, for this example, we're gonna be using a vanilla call option. So I will just create a class and I'll call it call. And the only parameter we actually need to keep track of that results in a payoff is the strike price. So within the constructor, we're just gonna take a strike price and then we'll assign it. Okay. So this may seem redundant because we are pricing something that already has value so, you know, why do we need to price it if the market says it has this value? Well, consider the case that we have an exotic. Maybe it's a barrier option or, or some complicated variation of that. It doesn't necessarily have a vanilla equivalent in which you can derive a similar value. So this is where Monte Carlo pricing really comes in handy because we're going to be able to determine the potential of the future payoff of that exotic and then discount it to the present to find its value. So. That's the general gist of what we're doing here. So we started, we're, we're just gonna use this call as an example. So we started by modeling the call. It's a very crude model of a call option, but it'll do the job. So now let's move on to the actual simulation portion. So to, to go ahead and build this simulation, we're going to need to build a class that accepts some parameters that allow us to generate sample paths for the geometric Brownian motion that we're assuming the underlying asset follows. So let's build out a class. I'm gonna call it Euro call sim. And the reason that I'm specifying European for the call is because I'm just going to assume that the option will be exercised on expiration. So if it's in the money, then it's going to be exercised and there will be a payoff. And if it is at the money or if it is out of the money, then we're just going to have a payoff of zero. So let's create a constructor. And the constructor is gonna take a couple of different parameters so that we can build this geometric Brownian motion simulation. So we're gonna take a call option. This is going to allow us to determine the payoff. We're going to take N options. So this is the number of options that we're going to simulate. We're gonna take an initial asset price. This is for the stochastic process class. And the stochastic process class also needs a drift a time step term, a volatility term. And now we also need two more, two more parameters. We need a time until expiration. So this is so that we can generate the geometric Brownian motion out to this time till expiration for the option. So in the case of this call, it was approximately 35 days. So we're gonna take a time till expiration and we're also gonna take a risk-free rate. And the risk-free rate is to help us discount the payoffs of all of the options in our simulation to the present. 
Now that we have all the parameters, we can go ahead and actually build out this Monte Carlo simulation. So what is this going to look like? Well, for starters, we need a list of stochastic processes. We need to generate a set of stochastic processes that is of the same length as the number of options that we wish to simulate. So to do this, we're going to create a list called stochastic process. And whoops, we're going to generate a new stochastic process instance for each option. So we'll do for i in range 0 to n options stochastic process dot append and this is where we create our new instance of a stochastic process and we will assign all of the given parameters so this is where we assign our initial asset price this is where we assign the drift the time step or the change in time and the volatility all righty now that we have our stochastic processes generated we need to take time steps towards the time till expiration, generating sample paths that the underlying asset may follow. So to do this, we're going to create a for each loop. So for each stochastic process in stochastic processes, whoops, I'll call this stochastic processes because it's a set of stochastic processes. So for each process in that set, Oh, I got to change it here too. For each process in that set, the time till expiration is going to equal the given time till expiration. So we'll just call this time till expiration I, for instance. And while this instance time till expiration, less the stochastic processes time step is greater than zero we want to take a step forward in time, meaning there's still time until the contract is expired. So we will do TTE is equal to, sorry, TTEI is equal to TTEI time till expiration for this instance is equal to the time till expiration for this instance less the stochastic process's time step. And what that's doing is decrementing the time until expiration for this instance, meaning we're taking a step closer to the options expiration and we're generating a new price when we say time step. And what that's going to do is it's going to iterate through all of our stochastic process instances in the stochastic processes list and generate asset paths for each process. And, and that's exactly what we want. So now that we have our sample paths generated, we can actually find the payoff of each of these prospective sample paths. To do that, we'll create another list called payoffs, and we'll create another loop that iterates through each stochastic process. So for stochastic process in stochastic processes, we are going to determine the payoff. So the payoff is going to equal the current stochastic process. We're going to find the asset price at expiration, which is going to be the length of asset prices less one. So that's how we get the, the price at expiration that was generated by the sample path. Then we're going to subtract the calls strike price. What we're essentially doing here is saying, OK, we're going to take the asset price at expiration and subtract the strike. And what that's going to do is that's going to generate the payoff of the call. Now, obviously, we don't know if it's in the money, at the money, or out of the money. So we need to create a little ternary operator, if you will. So we'll say z is equal to payoff if the payoff is greater than zero. Otherwise, the payoff will be zero. Because obviously, we can't have a negative value for our payoff because it's an option. It's the right to buy, not the obligation. So this is how we're going to handle that. And then we're going to append that payoff to our payoffs list. And now what we have is we have a set of payoffs for all of our sample paths.
Alrighty, so the last thing that we need to do is actually discount the payoffs, the average value of the payoffs in the future to the present. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the price, so the price of this call is going to equal the average, so we'll use NumPy for this, the average of the payoffs times math.exponent, so this is going to be the time discounted sum of the average payoff of the options, and that's what we're saying the price of the call is equal to. So we're going to discount it, we're gonna assume continuous time, we'll say it's the e to the negative time till expiration times the risk-free rate. And that is going to get us the price of the call option today. So now we have everything we need to actually simulate the asset prices and find the potential payoffs for its respective derivative. And to actually implement this Monte Carlo pricing, all we have to do is create an instance of the Euro call sim class. So we will create an instance and then we'll create an instance of the call. And if you recall from earlier, the call has a strike price of 130. We are going to generate 1,000 options. The initial asset price is 195.48, just like from earlier. And the drift, we're going to assume is zero in this case, because we want the risk neutral price. So we're gonna take time steps of days, so one over 365 days, and we're going to have a volatility of 106.25% or 1.0625. The time until expiration is exactly 36 days. So we'll do 36 divided by 365. And for the risk-free rate, we're just going to assume that it is 8%. Now, if we want to print the results of this pricing, we can just select the price field in the Euro call sim class and print it after all of the simulation is done. So now that we're all done here, let's double check everything to make sure we're all ready to run this. Um, the strike has to be lowercase s and we need to append this to the payoffs and that should be it. If we run this, we get a price of $160.75. Now, it's not precisely $154.46, and you might be wondering what the whole purpose of this, this sort of pricing is. And the, the real benefit to this methodology, this, this method of pricing, is when we don't have a vanilla equivalent. So we obviously have a market for this call, the market based on the law of supply and demand determines an equilibrium price. And that price falls in line with all of the traditional closed form solutions, such as the Black-Scholes equation. And, and we're able to inversely apply that equation to find parameters like implied volatility. But, but where is Monte Carlo pricing helpful? Well, Monte Carlo pricing is, is essentially the, the good enough pricing solution. So we're able to model different financial derivatives, very complicated payoffs too, very easily because we can just program it right into our simulation. We have a call with a strike price, but what if the asset didn't pay off after a certain value, like a barrier option? That would be also very easy to implement. We could just simply take a barrier level as a parameter in our call, and then all of a sudden we would have a call barrier. And somewhere in our simulation, we would say if the the current asset price exceeds the barrier level, then the options payoff is zero. And, and this is really where Monte Carlo pricing comes in handy is, is where we have these, these non-standard payoffs for different financial derivatives, and we need a way to determine what their present value is or their fair present value for sale. So this has been an introduction to Monte Carlo pricing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you want more information, you can check out this article I wrote on Medium about pricing exotics. Specifically, I, I price a up and out barrier option uh, for, for more information or, or a more precise implementation of exotics pricing. You can go uh, check that out. And it's also on my GitHub. So feel free to check all that stuff out.